6.38. This man's ready. You ready for today, boss man? Aw, oh, dude, I'm nervous. You nervous, nervous? Yeah, it's like you have like a presentation or like a book report due, and then you're gonna get super scrutinized by the tuner. New clutch, new turbo. Yeah. Damn, damn near just a brand new car. Last minute, Andrew told me to bring my car as well. If we have time today, I hope he don't play that while well, we ran out of time. It's a two for one special today, but mainly this about you. But if we can get both done in one I think, day. I think so, because he, he said it's pretty easy to get this thing set up. So. Okay. You see that? The car is moving on its own power. Y'all remember when this came as just a shell? Now it's a whole ass running car. Day Gilbert, you next. Every day's a great day. That's what I like to hear. You see, that's what I'm talking about right there. That boy talking with a glass half full. Wrong side. No, I'm gonna no. get the stick. <laughs> I don't think Casper's gonna want any of this when your car's done. Oh no way. Now, should I should I go bother him? You should go bother him. You know what? What's up? Good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing? You ain't gonna want none of these problems when these cars is running with that little 1000 you got. I'll bring it right now. I'll smoke you like this. Listen, we be back. For Pinkston? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not bite off more than I can chew. Hey, hold on. Hey, hold on a minute. Let me go get it real fast. You woke, you woke the dragon up. Right. Go. Mr. Casper. You gotta, you gotta wait till we get a tune. We're no, not no, no, no. Your car's running good. No, no. I gotta get a tune. Don't chicken out on me, dog. I brought it out. Let's head to this man Andrew Molina's shop so we can get a tune and get these things running right. I have, I have a kid. I know. What? I have a kid. You went I'm to like, church like this? No, my mom went to church. I wait for her to get out. Man, I got a dookie. Good morning. You ready for today? I am ready. All right. Ready I'm ready. I, I don't Matt know. Ready for the day? Matt's ready. Dude, I'm, yes, I'm ready. This thing's ready. That thing's ready. So this is like when you do your book report and your teachers are scrutinizing all your little things. I'm being scrutinized right now. What do you scrutinize you on? What is that? So far, we're deducting a few points from your Couple points, dude. Cards. I went from an A to a C. <laughs> Take some donuts for the rest of us, man. There's a huge tire right there, dog. Trying to go drag racing? <laughs> <laughs> Can you take those off my camera or something? <laughs> <laughs> you look good. And you look good. Yeah. You know, that's all haircut. You did? Yeah. You couldn't even tell, dude. <laughs> You're just always fresh. That's the problem. <laughs> you didn't bring tools, bro? <laughs> you are on Mars and no tools? Did it say YMCA on the top? <laughs> did it say pick did a tool, pick a part? <laughs> what the hell? Ain't nothing like watching Baby Boy while Matt Gilbert and Andrew Molina sort out Matt's problem. What grades are you getting on his test right now? So far, he's got a B plus. <laughs> See, these get degrees. <laughs> So there could be a couple things. Either the rod for his uh, actuator is like too preloaded, so we could extend it to kind of open up the wastegate even further. The, the problem with that though is that sometimes the wastegate will be cracked open, you make no torque. So what's the- Should have just did Tom out from the get-go, from the rip, but I wanted to keep it OEM-ish and use the bottom out. You can always just go home and get the turbo and then not do all of this. <laughs> what's, so what's the solution? Turbine housing, put my turbine manifold on, wastegate. New downpipe and then new intake. So you're not going to be driving anytime <laughs> soon, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew, can you make can you make it work so he can at least drive the car? Yeah, he can drive it. He just it's just going to stop at 6,000 RPMs because it starts to like check out the boost graph. Like the boost is supposed to stay nice and flat, right? Like somebody want 14 pounds. It tries and then it just digs up. It just overcomes and yeah, right, 20 pounds and then, and then the overboost comes on. But we're going to come back for Matt's car. It's just a little uh, dip in the road. But the day is not wasted, is it, boys? Nope. Because no, we can still tune, sell, 
and Mr. Andrew Molina is going to bless me with his hands. Yeah. So as we go down the list of things I need to do to my car, Andrew Molina found out. Uh, what's that line in your hand? Dude, I see this line dangling, and it's and it's like the actual main source of the wastegate. That That's my wastegate line. Yeah, man. So, so this whole time I've been driving this car without a wastegate line. Pretty much. Like, no wonder it's like overboosting on you, but. And I'm shocked that you haven't even actually ever bring, brought this thing to get tuned. This thing's been on the base map for like how long now? It's about time to get this thing onto the roller. That's why I brought it to you. Had I drove it any more? So, mind you, this engine is pretty, pretty tired to say the least. So we're going to do what we can just to make it happy. So to give you all a rundown, I drove this. I guess I've been driving this car ever since SEMA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Even the Burnyard. The SEMA Burnyard, I was driving this whole time. Over boosting. What you think, Mr. Molina? I mean, I couldn't fit it in a PG-13 sentence. That's for sure. But give me, give me the raw, uncut version of of my of this I mean, thing. You're my boy. This thing's been through hella hands and all kinds of messes. Um, I don't know. Like a year ago, we put a base map in, it and you haven't actually ever been on the dyno. So let's put on the dyno and just just somewhat set it safe. Hopefully, it stays together because this engine's ticking and talking and spilling oil from all kinds of places. Typically, I wouldn't put a car like this on the dyno, but like I said, I'm shocked that you haven't blown this thing up on a base map from the burn yard, SEMA, all kinds of stuff. So. Every time I see you out at the track, I always text you like, hey, man, don't ride, don't, don't, don't race the tune, please, you know? So at least now go ahead after we're done with it. Thank you for having faith. Yeah, I don't know about anything on this block and head anymore, to be real. Well, I didn't build it. It was just in my other R30. It was in my other Skyline at the time, so... It's just convenient to have. Yeah. If I've learned anything, trust one set of hands and one tuner. We are comparing my car to a, a football player. I said... Rakishi. I said, oh, you, yeah. you said The Rock. <laughs> and I said Michael Orr. Yeah, so I have the blind side of Skylines right now. Do you, you get mad that they, uh, they didn't cast you for the blind side? <laughs> which means uh, there's a certain level that the car is supposed to make boost. When it's over boosting, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's making too much boost, which means when that happens, a series of things in your engine could happen. The head could lift, a piston could fall out, a bearing could go out of place, uh, and we don't want that. So what Mr. Molina's doing is double checking and double stacking everything he can figure out in this engine bay. But unfortunately, since it's been running, all of this shit over here is really hot. It's one of those things like I need to really seriously overhaul this car because it's about that time. But the good thing is Mr. Molina was telling me that it's holding it's holding map and all the base is really good. So it's like, it's just like the blind side. Like we didn't know my car had this much talent, but I knew. I believed in my car. Matthew believed in my car. Gilbert believed in my car. I didn't. He didn't know. He didn't, he didn't at all. It's just like me. It has unpredictable levels of strength and tolerance for pain. He has explained that my car has a heavy spring, which isn't a bad thing. It's just gonna make power a lot later on in the game instead of early on in the game. And it's gonna close the gap on my spark plugs. It's on late for a number of reasons, for like the laggy engine or the cam timing has a lot to do with it. But the heavy spring just means that like it makes a lot of boost, so I gotta raise the boost cut limit, you know? So okay. Looks like it's starting to taper up at 25 pounds of boost. It's a lot of boost. Uh -huh. So we're gonna gap down the spark plugs and see if we get a clean passage. As you can see, my spark plug looks like it was found at the bottom of the Titanic. No bueno. Mr. Molina, bueno. Muy bonita. So I was in the bathroom, Gilbert, Matt, and Andrew replaced the spark plugs. Let's tune in with Andrew. Let's see what's up. There are pros 
pros and cons to getting this car tuned today, and I'm gonna tell you. Number one, I'm running out of fuel, so as the car's making more power, the fuel level is tapering off because the car's trying to suck up more gas, but it can't because it only has one pump. So the cool thing is, my car wants to make more power. The bad thing is, I can't give it enough power because it only has one pump. So the solution is getting a two-pump system, which we were planning to do like a two-pump surge tank. It motivates me to get that process done faster, but the thing is right now is, don't have the time, I've got other stuff to do. But number three, Robert Sell Boucher is actually great. It's honestly worth putting money and fixing the head, like taking the cam off and just shimming it. Like, if you fix that, it makes like 700 horsepower. It's not way, I, I was expecting way less or more issues. As a precautionary for me, because I'm stupid and I'm gonna to try to go ham in this, he's gonna set the rev low. So that way, which that means is when I try to drive it at the point he did on the dyno, it won't happen. He's doing pulls on the dyno at 7,500. He's gonna taper it off to six grand. So that way I can still have fun and drive the car, but I'm not gonna get that full accessibility and range that you saw on the dyno which is cool because I'm trying to save this car and we got a lot of things to do to it. So for right now, I have a safe tune because I've just been dogging this car as is. This car is safe to drive. Um, I'm not gonna try to dog it. He knows in his head, he's like, this fucker's gonna dog. Anyway, yeah, yeah I'm gonna <laughs> If I've learned anything from my friends who have had friends who tune, I've seen cam gears pop out of whole ass valve covers and I do not wanna be that guy. Mr. Molina tuned the car. We know the issues, need more fuel, so we need a second pump. Matt needs to fix his wastegate, so he either needs to weld the wastegate onto his car, I mean to the stock manifold, or just go on top manifold setup. And Mr. Molina, per usual, is just, is just that guy. So, thank you for watching. It's been a great day. This man's out here doing the best he can do. Let's go home. So for you, those of you who stuck around this long, this is the graph from the pool you saw in the dyno when he told me I'm running out of fuel. As you can see, I made 687 horsepower on 591 pounds of foot torque. I want to make more, but I don't. So if people are asking, well, Gary, why didn't you just dial it down with the boost? I do not have a boost controller on this car, so it's just a boost by the spring pressure of the wastegate. Till next time, we'll get a bigger fuel pump and see how much more power we can make. Have a good night.